Well, you may be wondering, what is V3? Well, V3 is the third update to the Ultimate Effects Pack. I'm currently working on it, and I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of some of the transitions that I'm working on right now to be included in the pack. Now, all of these transitions are pretty insane, and I haven't seen anything like it before, so I'm gonna show you how to make it. But I quickly wanted to show you that this update hopefully will be here by the end of the month, but as you can see, it is literally drag and drop, and you can quickly and easily make that amazing intro that we did in a matter of seconds. It is absolutely insane and I'm so stoked to be able to do this. We just dragged those on there and now let me render this out. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty amazing that these are all just drag and drop transitions and you literally don't have to do anything. So I'm working really hard to get the V3 update for the Ultimate Effects Pack here as soon as possible. But let's just jump into showing you how to create some of these transitions. But first, this video is brought to you by Skillshare, and we're gonna be talking more about that later. Today's question comes from Peter Cordova. When you encountered your biggest creative rut, what helped you overcome it? So hit the answer to that question in the comments down below. And if you want to be featured in a future tutorial, just drop a question. The biggest thing that helped me overcome a creative rut was actually holding myself accountable. When you create deadlines for yourself, it tells you in the back of your mind that this is really important and you need to get it done. So I just kept creating deadlines and then before I knew it, I was back to creating consistent content. All right, so now we're in Premiere Pro and this is the first effect that we're gonna be creating. It's a simple stretch in as I'm calling it. Uh, as you see, if we scrub through here, the image starts to pull into the center. You get some blurring, you get some RGB effects, and then it transitions into this clip pretty seamlessly. Delete everything and then all you need to do is head on over to your project area, click the new item button and make an adjustment layer and drag that adjustment layer onto your clips or like over your clips. And now we need to pick how long we want this transition to last. I'm gonna hold the shift key and the left arrow key once. That will jump me five frames out in that direction. So I'm gonna make a cut by clicking C on the keyboard and delete that. And then I'm gonna go back to the center of my clip and then hold the shift key and the right arrow key twice. That will jump me 10 frames out in that direction. Make a cut by hitting C and then delete the back half. On this adjustment layer, we're actually going to want to right click it and select nest. And you can name this whatever you want. Let's name this stretch transition. Now that we've nested that clip, you're going to right click on it and make it an adjustment layer. This is kind of a little workaround that you need to do when you are doing some transforms on it so that the transform will actually affect the clip beneath here. So on this clip, let's start by creating this effect. Head on over to the effects tab and type in replicate and drag on replicate onto that adjustment nested layer now and change the count to three. That will create this grid-like view. And then also we're going to type in mirror in the effects tab and drag on mirror and we want to mirror this middle image to the right hand side so what you're going to do is actually drag the reflection center x value to the left until that image comes in and they match pretty dang close now pro tip here you can actually hold control when you are getting close and it will start scrubbing a little bit slower so get that pretty close and then now what you want to do is drag on another mirror effect change the reflection angle to 180 and now you're going to drag the x value to the left again until you mirror that image on that side remember to hold control when you get close so you can get it pretty even once you are happy with your mirror and everything looks good, we can move on to the next step. And this is adding a transform. Type in transform and drag on the video effects distort transform. So what you wanna do immediately is uncheck uniform scale and change the scale height to 300 and the scale width to 300. Now you have a base starting point, but check this out. If I change the scale width to let's say 100 or I decrease the size of it, look what's happening to our image. It's almost pulling into itself, which is exactly what we need. And before we actually start this transition, let's hit C on our keyboard and make a cut in the center because the back half will be different. So now that you have the first half selected, let's start keyframing the transform. So I'm gonna go to the very beginning and change my scale to 300 
and toggle a keyframe on the scale width and then go somewhere close to the end and change this to let's say 100. And I'm going to right click on my first one, go to ease out, right click on my second one and go to ease in. And then I'm also going to uncheck use composition shutter angles and change this to 360. Now I'm going to click these down arrows right here next to scale width and I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. I'm going to drag this first keyframe out as far as I can and I'm going to try to keep that line nice and flat right there. Also I'm going to adjust this graph up like this and drag that to the bottom so we have this nice ramp up into there and then just drag this keyframe to the end so now if you scroll through this you can see that our image will start to pull into itself and then it'll go into our next image so that's the first part and now let's go to the back part and all you have to do is actually delete all of those effects that we just created because this one's a little bit easier go to the effects tab and type in crop and drag on the crop tool. Click this zoom button. So now if we manipulate the left or the right, it will actually stretch the image. And we're gonna change the left cropping to 40% and the right cropping to 40%. And then I'm also gonna click a keyframe on both of those. So it's set to keyframe right there. And then go somewhere close to the end and click the reset button and that'll reset those keyframes. Highlight both of your beginning keyframes, right click, ease out. Highlight both your ending keyframes, right click, ease in, and click the down arrows on both of these. And you can click this line and drag it down so you can see it a little bit better. But we wanna drag this left one all the way to that left point, And we're gonna drag this bottom one out as far as we can so we get a gradual slope. And then do the exact same one for the left cropping tool or the left cropping keyframe. And then once you're happy with that, highlight both those ending keyframes and drag them out to the right. Now, if you play this back, you'll see that it looks like this. And if you want to add some RGB in there, you can simply create a VR digital glitch, but I've done a lot of tutorials on that. So just watch those if you want to learn how to do some RGB stuff. But that's the basics of how I created some of these stretching transitions. Next, let's look at how to create this transition right here, which gets a little bit more complex because we're dealing with so much going on, but I just love how it looks. I mean, look at this. When you get close, look at how it's creating all of these images, creating that realism in blending your scenes, which is pretty cool. But first, let's hear from our sponsor. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Who knows, maybe I'll make a class on Skillshare soon. But I actually found myself loving this class from my friend JR. It's about grabbing your audience and creating an enthralling intro to your videos because most people overlook the first 15 seconds, but he jumps into everything you need to know and it's awesome. For limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And at less than $10 a month, Skillshare is a no-brainer. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into it. All right, so this next one is pretty complex, but I think you will manage. It's not that bad, but good luck. So let's just delete everything and start from scratch. Again, you're gonna wanna create a new adjustment layer, so click the new item button and then adjustment layer and drag this over your videos and let's figure out how long we want this transition to be. So I'm gonna go to the center of my clips, hold the shift key and the left arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go 40 frames out in that direction and then go back to the center, hold the shift key, right arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 40 frames out in that direction. So technically this should be an 80 frame transition. Now that we've done that, we're gonna right click on our adjustment layer and select nest and name this stretch pan. What you name that stretch pan, right click on it and select adjustment layer. And then what we need to do is actually start creating the effect. So this is where the fun happens. For starters, type in offset and drag on the offset and change the shift center to zero, zero. So then it creates this image. And now you wanna type in replicate under the effects tab, drag that onto your nested adjustment layer and make sure the count is two. 
And then we need to type in mirror because we need to drag on a mirror effect and start mirroring all of the edges. So I'm gonna pull this X value all the way to the left until it starts coming in and hold control once it gets close to slow it down a little bit and line it up so you can't see that line anymore. Now drag on another mirror effect and we're gonna change the reflection angle to 180. And again, drag that X value all the way to the left until you get rid of that line right there, holding control when you get close. And also drag on another mirror effect and we're gonna change the reflection angle to 90 degrees and then we're going to drag the Y value to the right and that will get rid of our bottom line right there. So drag it once it gets close and you guessed it, drag on one more mirror effect, change the reflection angle to negative 90 and drag that Y value to the left and hold it up there to the top until it gets close. Now what we need to do is actually type in transform and drag on a transform effect right here. And this is where we can start to manipulate it. For starters, you're gonna wanna increase your scale to 200%. And then now we can manipulate this image around. If you change the position, you can see that we have some room on the left and the right right here. So now that you've actually created that effect, Premiere has a little bug when you actually cut clips that are nested adjustment layers. So we can't actually use this back half. So you're gonna actually have to recreate that adjustment layer. So all you need to do is drag on another adjustment layer and then go to the center of your clip, right, shift right arrow key eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cut down that clip. And now what we need to do is right click on that adjustment layer, go to nest, name this whatever you want, right click on it and select adjustment layer. Now we can go through here and hold control and click all of our effects. Control C or Command C on a Mac and then Control V. That will paste that effect into here. So now we can manipulate each one of these individually and Premiere won't glitch out on you. So now that we did that, all you need to do is start keyframing the position. So go to the beginning of the first transition point and select a position keyframe. And then now you need to go somewhere towards the end and you need to pick which side of this image or what corner you want to transition to. So drag your X and Y values until you get something that you like. For this example, I'm going to drag it into the upper right portion. And then what I'm gonna do is right click on my first keyframe, temporal interpolation, ease out. Right click on my second keyframe, temporal interpolation, ease in. And then I'm gonna click these down arrows and I'm just gonna simply drag this all the way to the right on the first keyframe. And I'm also going to drag this right keyframe all the way to the right. So then we create a nice gradual speed graph into that. You can adjust this graph as much as you want. So you can drag that to the left, or keep it as is. Now we need to remember that we are moving into the upper right hand portion of this image so that when we are working on this image, we need to make sure that we are actually pulling from this bottom left hand side because that will pull that image up in that diagonal direction. So I'm gonna make a keyframe and then change my image so that I'm into the left bottom portion by changing the X and Y values. And now I'm gonna move that keyframe to the beginning, go to the end and click the reset button. And I'm simply going to right click on my first one, temporal interpolation, ease out, right click on my next one, temporal interpolation, ease in. And I'm gonna drag this speed graph all the way to the left and then I'm gonna drag that one all the way to the left as well. This way it pulls down into that. And uncheck use composition shutter angle and change that to 200. Now if we play this back, I'm gonna render it out so you can see it. All right, and that looks like this. So we're slowly pulling into that upper right hand corner and it doesn't look that good. So we're gonna actually create another adjustment layer and drag that onto our project, cut it down over our clips and let's also make a cut in the center. So we can highlight this first adjustment layer, right click, select nest, and you can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name this crop and right click on that and select adjustment layer. So now that this is an adjustment layer. So let's head on to the effects tab and type in crop and drag on the crop tool. Now what you wanna do is check that zoom tool. So now if you adjust the crop tool, it will actually start to pull into the image. So what I need to do is find out where my video is going into. So for starters, let's, let's mess around with the crop tool. We know we're pulling up into the right, so if I increase the left, what happens? It's like pulling from that right side of the screen, which is pretty nice, but let's check out the right. So if I do that, ah, that's not going the right way. So I know that I need to use this left one. So how do I also pull from the top portion of the screen? So you guessed it, it's not top this time, it's actually the bottom. So if I pull from the bottom, then that will get the idea that we're pulling from here and we're pulling from here. So I know that I need to, 
keyframe the left and the bottom keyframes. So what you're going to do is reset all of those, toggle a keyframe on left and the bottom right away, and then go somewhere towards the end and keyframe this left. Let's pull it. You can pull it as much as you want, but I'm going to only pull it to 99 because when you pull it to 100, sometimes it gets glitchy. So let's go to 99 and let's change the bottom one to 99 as well. And then let's highlight both of these starting keyframes, right click, ease out, right click on both of those ending keyframes and go to ease in. Click the down arrow speed graph on both of these and we are going to start manipulating this. I'm gonna pull this first one all the way out to the right, creating a nice bezier right there. And I'm just gonna leave this back one as is. And the same thing on this next keyframe, I'm gonna pull that out just like so. So it looks like that and leave the same one as is. So now if you scrub through here, you can see that we're pulling to the right. That cropping tool is actually pulling us into this image a little bit. So one thing you'll notice right away as you're scrubbing and we get closer to the edges of stuff, look at this little black edge that's coming in right here. That's because we need to add one more effect called alpha adjust and then select ignore alpha. Now if you're scrolling through here, you won't see those black edges anymore. But that's the overall look for our first transition. And now we need to manipulate it so that we are going into this next transition. So right click on this adjustment layer, select nest, and name this crop. And right click on it again, change it to an adjustment layer. And now we need to add that crop tool, but again, let's click on our bottom video layer and uncheck or check that composition shutter so we don't get motion blur. Now add a crop tool and then select zoom and now we also need to play with this again because it's not left it's actually going to be the opposite we want to pull from the right we want to pull from max percentage all the way back down to zero percent so right is the opposite of left and then top would be the opposite of the bottom one that we previously used so let's do top and right keyframes and drag those all the way to the beginning and go to those beginning keyframes and let's change these to 99 that looks good. And then we're going to go close to the end and select the reset keyframe button. Highlight both of your starting keyframes, go to ease out. Highlight both your next keyframes and go to ease in. Then click these down arrows right here and we actually need to pull this ending keyframe to the right as far as we can, keeping that line flat. Go to your next ending keyframe, pull that to the right as well. And then you can highlight both those and drag those to the end. And then you can either leave these starting keyframes like this right away, or you can actually pull them in later. So again, we need to add that alpha adjust because as you can see right here, we're getting those black edges. So let's drag on another alpha adjust. Drag that alpha adjust on crop and then select ignore alpha. So now when we are scrubbing through here, you won't see that black edges anymore. Now, before you play this back, make sure you uncheck Use Composition Shutter Angle on both of these and then render that out. So yeah, as you can see, that looks pretty awesome. I love how it looks when you get really close here because it's just so blurry and everything blends together. It's like you're really pulling your camera around your entire scene. But overall, it looks incredible. Now that we created that, let me show you something that's absolutely insane. And this is why I'm so excited to be working on this Ultimate Effects Pack. So if I just scroll up here, I'm gonna pick the upper right since that's the one that we just created. And I can drag that on here. And if I render this out, now this is pulling to the upper right version, but it still looks incredible. Now keep in mind, you can change the direction of anything by using the technique I showed you in this tutorial, but it's just an awesome feature to have that you can literally click and drag these on over your clips and you don't have to edit any of the effects because they're already included. So I'm hoping to release this update to the ultimate effects pack at the end of this month, but as you just saw, it takes me forever to make these transitions, so I'd really appreciate it if you click that like button. And if you learned something new today, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, subscribe if you're new because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.